You've lived alone for years in this quiet house at the end of a long, narrow street. It's peaceful, you'd always thought, the kind of house where you can shut out the world. But lately, something has been happening. Every night at exactly 3.13 a.m., you wake up to the sound of footsteps in the hallway. At first, you thought it was just the house settling, but the footsteps are deliberate, slow, like someone pacing just outside your bedroom door. The first night, you didn't think much of it, just a creaky old house playing tricks on your mind. But the next night, it happened again, the same time, the same slow, measured footsteps. But each time you tried to dismiss it, you found it harder to convince yourself. By the third night, you were awake before 3.13 a.m., lying in bed, waiting for it to happen. And it did. The soft, steady sound of footsteps in the hall. It was closer this time. The door handle rattled slightly, just once, but didn't turn. You stayed still, heart pounding, staring at the ceiling and praying the noise would stop. When morning came, you told yourself it was nothing, maybe a draft or something wrong with the house's foundation, but deep down, you knew this wasn't true. Night after night, it continued, always at 3.13 a.m. The footsteps, the rattling door handle, and a strange, oppressive silence afterward, as though something, or someone, was waiting just on the other side. You tried locking the door, but it didn't make a difference. The footsteps just came the same, and the handle rattled with a new kind of urgency, as though it knew the door was locked and was testing it. One night, you decided to stay awake to see if you could catch whatever was causing the noise. You sat in the corner of the room, holding your phone in trembling hands, the minutes ticking by you as you stared at the door. The house was dead silent, the kind of quiet that makes you feel like you're being swallowed by it. Your eyes stay fixed on the clock, waiting for 3.13 a.m. When the time finally came, your breath hitched in your throat. The sound of footsteps started, slow and methodical, growing louder with each passing second. You held your breath as the steps stopped just outside your door. The handle rattled, harder this time, as if whoever, or whatever, was behind it was growing frustrated. Then it stopped. You stayed there, frozen, barely daring to breathe. The silence dragged on, long enough that you almost convinced yourself it was over, that maybe the house was done playing its cruel tricks. But then you heard it, the sound of something brushing against the door, like fingers sliding across the wood, soft, deliberate, slow. You jumped to your feet, heart pounding so hard that you thought it would burst out of your chest. Your phone slipped from your hand, clattering to the floor, but you didn't dare reach down to pick it up. Instead, you moved slowly toward the door, your pulse thundering in your ears as you strained to listen for any other sounds. For the first time, you felt like it was waiting for you. With trembling fingers, you reached for the door handle. It was cool to the touch, and for a moment, you hesitated. You could feel something, someone, on the other side standing just as still as you, waiting for the door to open. Your mind raced, imagining what you might see, a shadowy figure, a pale face pressed against the wood, or worse, nothing at all. But before you could turn the handle, the door rattled violently. You stumbled back, fear surging through your body like ice. The door shook again, as if something was slamming into it, trying desperately to get in. You scrambled back toward the bed, grabbing your phone and dialing the police in a frenzy. The phone rang, but there was no answer, just silence, a void on the other end of the line. Your heart raced as the pounding on the door grew louder, more insistent. The wood groaned under the pressure, and for a moment, you thought the door would give way. And then, just as suddenly as it began, it stopped. The air grew still. The silence was suffocating. You didn't move. You didn't dare. After what felt like hours, you finally mustered the courage to move toward the door again. You pressed your ear against it, listening for any signs of movement, but there was nothing, 
just the sound of your own ragged breathing. You stayed there, pressed against the door, until the first light of dawn broke through the window. When you finally opened the door, the hallway was empty, as though nothing had ever been there. But you knew better. Something had been in your house. Something had tried to get in. And it wasn't finished. The next night, the footsteps returned at exactly 3.13 a.m., slower this time, as if whatever it was knew you were listening. You didn't move from the bed. You didn't dare open the door. But you knew, deep down, that it was only a matter of time before it found a way in. Because the next morning, when you went to check the door, you noticed something new. Scratches, deep and jagged, carved into the wood around the door handle. Whatever it was, it was getting impatient.